If they said this tumor as big as it was, it might have been developing, could have been anywhere from 15 to 18 years. What he was telling me is that you're full of cancer now. I just was upset. I didn't know what to do, which way to go, so I just prayed a lot. When a person is told that they've got cancer, the first thing they think about, I'm going to die. Glenn didn't see that at all. He says, I'm going to live. My decision was to go forward. Welcome to The Incurables. I'm Don Wildman. A good diet, consistent exercise, regular checkups, and all things in moderation are generally the hallmarks of a healthy lifestyle. Glenn Moore lived dutifully by these rules, and they appeared to serve him well. Then came the awful news, a diagnosis of stage 3C colon cancer. There was a moment of shock and disbelief. After all, Glenn had appeared to be doing all the right things. After the initial jolt, his family, friends, and doctors all rallied around Glenn, providing much needed emotional, medicinal, and spiritual support for the uncertain journey that lay ahead. Nothing was wrong with Glenn as far as we knew. Glenn seemed to be healthy, he exercised, he ate, we thought he was eating good. It was never nothing wrong with him. Whenever he'd go for his checkups, he'd always be fine. No high blood pressure, no uh, diabetes, no anything. So basically my health was in good shape, my weight was in good shape. No indications about anything. I just got a good bill of health. Despite appearances, something was noticeably wrong. In 2005, shortly after a routine checkup, Glenn made a startling discovery. I had my annual checkup and everything and what happened is that in the fall I had noticed blood in my stool. So that's why I went to uh, the doctor back to the doctor and he wanted to do some more tests because he was like shocked himself, you know. I was wondering was I gonna have to, uh, was it gonna be cancer? That's, my, that's the first thing that's, you know, coming into my mind. Glenn is, um, he's just a fun-loving person. Um, you know, everybody likes to be around Glenn. He's just wonderful. He's, uh, he's a good son. All mamas say that but I'm really sincere. Glenn Moore is that uh, extended hand to people uh, to help in any way that he can. And it was like, man, this is fabulous. I finally got somebody that I can use the terminology and say he's a friend. Glenn Moore was born on the south side of Chicago in 1947. He graduated from Hirsch High School in 1965 and attended Southeast Junior College for a year and a half. Glenn married his first wife, Marsha Harvey, at the age of 20. A year later, they had their first child, Marcia. Glenn married his second wife, Teresa Howell, in 1991, and together they had a daughter, Tanisha. Soon after Glenn's dreadful revelation of blood in his stool, a critical test had to be taken. I had the colonoscopy, and they said that I'd have to have surgery. So I wanted to get a second opinion about this uh, surgery. I talked to the onco oncologist. The oncologist said that, you know, it was definitely, you know, cancer, and it was a high level of cancer. They put me at stage uh, 3C. All stage three cancers is an, is an advance. So it goes like one, two, three, three is advanced, then it goes A, B, C. I had three C, four is terminal. So I was right at the back door there. I was just upset. I didn't, I, I couldn't think clear. I didn't know which way to go, what to do. Uh, I was just, you know, emotional to the point that I just, it was hard for me to function. I just prayed on it and then you know we talked about it and we finally made a decision about what we thought would be best for Glenn. What I had to do was stop thinking about what caused it and you know that more so and think about what I'm going to do about it. 
See, if I got hung up on what caused it, I was. I was hung up, I was down. Why me? Why did this happen? What did I do wrong? This or that and everything. If I kept doing that, I'd be dead. After receiving the earth-shattering news of a cancerous tumor, Glenn and Teresa were now faced with a daunting decision of which path to choose on the road to recovery. But Glenn was very fortunate. Prior to his diagnosis, Glenn's mother, Rose Sweeney, was successfully treated for a kidney ailment by Dr. Hugh Jenkins. Glenn immediately sought the naturopathic physician's advice. He came in because he didn't want to have the surgery. And he was surprised that because he'd gone through many cleanses, in fact, he'd gone on a cleanse called a master cleanse, and he would do that on four times a year. And he'd be surprised, why do I have colon cancer with all the cleansing I'm doing? And then I, after doing a complete evaluation with him and the question, I asked, well, what do you do between the cleansers? And he said, well, I'd eat everything because I figured the cleansers would be all right and I exercise three to four times a day, so I'd be all right. I said, no. And I let him know, like I let a lot of my patients know, that 85% of cancer comes from the American diet, specifically digestive problems. From the mouth to the anus, the only way that you're gonna have a problem there is from what you eat. Dr. Jenkins come up with a program to uh, reduce the size of the tumor. So we started with that program. It was a, I, used, I went on a 28 day fast and a six day coming off period. Nothing but uh, juices and raw, uh, vegetables. What I told him is that because this tumor is so big that they might have to go in and do the surgery. Okay, I didn't discount the surgery. Okay, but what my philosophy is is that surgery should be the very last resort. Let's try Mother Nature, but Mother Nature it's a longer therapy than drugs and surgery because we get down to the cause of the problem because it takes a minimum of four months to go through cleansing in a relatively healthy body. Any chronic condition could take a minimum of a year to get down to the cell level where disease starts. So he knew that in the three month period that we were doing prior to surgery, he wasn't totally cleaned out, but we're doing enough that that, colon, that tumor is starting to shrink. That's why I told him to go get it reevaluated prior to surgery, because he came to me after he had the colonoscopy. So we're having a three month period, so things are starting to shrink. It's not gonna to totally go away. Like I said, it takes a minimum of a year. But after frequent consultations with his oncologist and his surgeon, Glenn eventually decided it was necessary to take a more dramatic course of action. They kept talking to me about that I need to take this surgery. I kept researching, and that's the time I went to Cancer Center of America, got another uh, opinion or whatever, and uh, I had to have the surgery. So I decided not to keep doing the tissue cleanse to try to reduce the uh, tumor completely and I went on and had the surgery. But Dr. Jenkins prepared me for to uh, cleanse my system because one of the biggest things that happens when you go through a surgery like, like this is that you'll get an infection. So he wanted to reduce the chances of me having an infection. Surgery was just one phase of a multi-phased approach to Glenn's healing. But this initial remedy brought about a few complications for Glenn. Right after his surgery, he wasn't doing well at all. He was concerned. Uh, he was feeling his body was not functioning properly. He had to keep trying to make his bowels move. He wasn't going like we normally would go. When he got home, you know, it just was like, I wasn't sure like if everything would, would work out, you know, because he was just so um, not himself. He looked like he had um, aged and that um, it was just really hard for him. When he first came home and he was in the depression, I was telling him, you just got to get up and just, you know, even though you don't feel good, you just got to get up and you just got to go at it. And we just got to, you know, we just got to do this thing. I've never been cut on and, I, and for them to do this kind of surgery and I just was at a very, very low point. But I didn't have time to be at a low point too long. You know, I just made up in my mind that I was going to change my life and I was going to fight this because I'm always good for a good fight.
surgery took a tremendous toll on Glenn, but he was determined to fight for his survival. He continued to have faith in an integrative medical approach, but now Glenn's inclination to work toward a more comprehensive holistic treatment program loomed large. I never will forget when I come out of surgery, and that's the main thing I wanted to know, how the surgery went. And, uh, you know, I think it was about three days later. And, you know, you want to know, uh, well, how bad is it? Do I have to take the chemo? Uh, yeah, you have to take the chemo. And uh, I, I think I had 11 lymph lobes. Lymph lobes would carry the blood system all through your body. Five of them was infected. That's, uh, that means what he was telling me is that cancer is all through my body. It went regional. So I got cancer all through my body. So the only way that you are going to make sure that you can stop this cancer is to take chemo and flood it with high doses in order to stop it because that's the only way that you can stop it because you're full of cancer now. I said, hey man, we can beat this thing. We're gonna have to beat this thing. He looked at me, he said, yeah, I am. I said, so go through your investigative mode, all right? Find out, research. Then I had to calm down. Um, I talked to the Lord. I said, Lord, you know best. But we need your help now. Because Glenn became like my big brother. So I meant to be there, to help him go through that, all right? And uh, I said, I'm going to be here, babe. That's all I can do. I can be here. Tough choices continued to challenge Glenn. He often consulted with family and friends, and with their loving and unconditional support, Glenn finally settled on an option with which he was very familiar. We never went to the doctor for anything. We always had uh, home remedies, and my mama was always in the book about doing home remedies. You know, we use all of oregano and different, she, she, to the day, she's got all kind of books on natural remedies. So I'll go get my checkups and everything, but before I go to the doctor on anything, I usually I might call my mom or whatever on a natural healer because she's got something for everything. Glenn couldn't decide. Mom, you think I should go chemo? You think I should go with the herbs? Well, Glenn, you know how I feel about the herbs. And I haven't saw anyone do well with chemo. So uh, my opinion, I think you should go with the herbs. He had been taking a lot of natural stuff anyway, and um, it seemed like it made him, he felt better, you know, made him stronger. I mean, I know it, it couldn't definitely do as much harm as the uh, chemo because the chemo attacks the uh, cells and, and, and kills everything in the body and it doesn't know what, what to attack and what not to attack. And I read all kind of material on cancer, on colon cancer and uh, different, you know, I read the material on uh, the side effects of uh, chemo and just read up on it real properly, you know, before I made the decision what I did. I watched him. Boy, he was vigilant and in getting information from medical sources, uh, medical people that he knew, uh, uh, nurses. Uh, I'm seeing him, he's, he's, he's just moving. His whole persona changed again. I ain't doing nothing until I find out and know for sure that I got all of the information. I'm going to get me second opinions, third opinions, fourth opinions, whatever. He come back and he said, Hank, Man, I done made up my mind. I ain't letting them do all that chemo stuff on me. You know, I've seen people through chemo, you know, and how they lose their hair and, you know, certain things. I'm Chemo in its place probably for certain people might be fine, but for me, you know, that, you know, I didn't want to go that way. For Glenn, timing was critical. Continuing natural therapy with Dr. Jenkins suited him, but he was overcome by a heightened sense of urgency. To further his progress, Glenn would have to chart an entirely different course for his life. 
I put them on a corrective maintenance health program, not just a diet, but a health program, okay? The health program, what he was eating is we got him away from his hamburgers and fries and, and red meats and all the rest of that stuff, because red meat, specifically your beef, has been directly related to colon cancer. So, so I said, you got to take that out your diet. When you go through a program like this, you got to make up in your mind that you're changing your whole lifestyle. And this is what I did. I thought I was doing good, but as my mom said, good is not good, is not good to good get better and better get best. So now I was at a challenge. I had to do my best. But we also had to do something that was more for his diet that the American Cancer Society states. And they state in their brochures that you should eat five to nine fruits and vegetables a day to reduce your risk of cancer. By eating that much fruits and vegetables and whole grains also, that increases your fiber, which helps to absorb the toxins in the system. So we were having them to eat between a 60, 80 percent raw food diet. So that means I had to cut out all a lot of old habits. I just changed my whole lifestyle around. You can call it cold turkey if you want. You know, I just stopped all the bad stuff. The name of the program is called Tissue Cleansing Through Bowel Management. One of my mentors, Dr. Bernard Jensen, is from his book of the same name, where the people are taking a number of different supplements. They're taking what I call, it's called the liver flush, because the liver is your master filter, and anything that happens in the body, the liver is always involved. So when you're having cancer, it doesn't make a difference where the cancer is colon cancer, lung cancer, prostate cancer, breast cancer, because the liver holds one third of the body's blood that's always involved. But that doesn't mean that there's liver cancer because it's such a fantastic organ that 80% of it can be destroyed through disease or removed through surgery and it can totally regenerate itself. So this master filter is working, so we put putting them on herbs for filtering, uh, detoxifying the liver, detoxifying the colon, detoxifying the whole body. One of the main uh, he, uh, herb that he prescribed was pawpaw. Pawpaw and ET, those are the two main uh, cancer killing herbs that he uh, prescribed for me. With these herbs working and everything while you're still trying to recover, what you're doing is actually buying time. This gives your body time to heal. Everything has improved, you know, in my life. I'm more energetic, more stronger. I'm in better shape now than I was, I say, at 35 or 40. He knows that the herbs have helped heal him, and he didn't have to go through chemo. He knows that exercise plays a major, 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 major importance in regards to, to being healthy. He's there, he's working out in the gym like up to three hours a day. He's a machine and he pushes himself constantly. Working out is like a stress buster and that's what really pulled me out. You know, a lot of times I'd be down and everything and I'd just, you know, go into that gym and work out and by me just working out, that took a tremendous amount of stress off of me. The discouragement left his face. His skin even brightened up. I have a certain meal that I eat every day. I make sure that I get a salad in. I make sure that I get fish three or four times a week. I get beans in for my protein. And the reason that I do all this is that it has really, really changed my life. It really builds me up with energy. I can go all day. I can start off with a smoothie in the morning, work out for three hours, uh, don't have to have anything uh, while I'm working out. Also, I drink a gallon of water, which is very important. I think he's doing wonderful. I feel confident he's taking good care of himself. He says, well, I've, I've got to, I intend to be around here with you a long time, Mom. <laughs> Everything's good. His eyesight's better. Um, all of his tests and, and, and everything are going real good. So I think he's doing really well. He's dedicated to being here, to be here with my son and making sure that he's around to see him do games and whatever else. So all that is, is I think, his commitment to live. You know, some people give up, you know, they just, they, they just give up, but he's, he's a fighter. I can't thank everyone enough for all the support that they gave me and still behind me 100%. That's what really can pull you through. If you got your family behind you, you know, really you can't do it. Just trying to do this by yourself, I don't know if I could have just done it by myself. You know, I just took it all the way up to another level with their support. 
because not only did I didn't want to let myself down, I didn't want to let them down. He did not go through cancer just for himself. He went through cancer for a lot of other people, all of us, I believe. It's not uncommon to walk through the gym and see Glenn talking to people, like in a little huddle or whatever, asking them if they had gone through a colonoscopy. I've been uh, out the real danger of cancer. I think my level, I think the doctor told me it was supposed to be like 3.2. Uh, within the first year, I was 3.2. My last test, I'm like 2.2. 3.2 and under is normal. So I've been way below normal for the last year. But the main thing is that the way it has really changed my life. And I sleep good at night and get up in the morning and just feel full of life. And it has really just changed my life. So that's one of the main reasons I stick with it. It's just like a way of life now. You know, this is what I do. <laughs>